An asteroid drifts too close and the black hole seizes it. Gas twists and whirls and gravity starts pulling harder and faster. The accretion disk blazes and spins like a cosmic whirlpool. Radiation bursts out in violent flashes. The poor asteroid gets crushed and torn. Particles stretch into filaments, ripped by tidal forces. And then, in the blink of an eye, the event horizon swallows the asteroid, and it disappears from view. You're standing at the edge of the ultimate cosmic cliff, staring into a black hole. Sounds like instant doom, right? But scientists now say that, in theory, a human could actually explore a black hole and survive. The only thing is that once you go in, there's no coming back. It's a one-way ticket. So, how would it happen? It depends on the type of black hole. The thing is, black holes fall into two camps. There are stellar mass black holes, a few to a few dozen times the mass of the sun. When a massive star, like eight times heavier than the sun, burns through its fuel, it doesn't just fade away. It collapses, rebounds, and explodes in a supernova. What's left behind depends on how massive it was. Medium big ones leave behind a neutron star, an ultra-dense remnant of a star. But if it was 20 times the sun or more, it collapses all the way down into a stellar mass black hole. Most of the stellar mass black holes we've spotted are the clingy type paired up with stars. Some suck gas from their partner stars and light up in X-rays. We call those X-ray binaries. Thanks to these dramatic duos, we've found around 50 black holes in our galaxy so far. But scientists think there could be up to 100 million lurking quietly in the Milky Way. So yeah, we're surrounded. Next, there are supermassive black holes. These are behemoths, chilling in the center of galaxies, millions to billions of solar masses. Almost every big galaxy out there, including our own Milky Way, has a supermassive black hole. Our galaxy's own heavyweight champ is Sagittarius A star. It tips the cosmic scales at about 4 million times the sun's mass. That sounds huge, but compared to other galaxies, it's kind of a lightweight. Take the black hole in the galaxy Holmberg 15A, for example. It's got at least 40 billion suns worth of mass. To survive the jump into a black hole, you gotta pick this second supermassive one. Jumping into a small black hole is like being dropped into a cosmic blender. The outcome is instant, messy, complete spaghettification. Yep, that's a real science term. It's the process where something falling into a black hole gets pulled so hard by gravity that it's stretched out like spaghetti and then torn apart. But supermassive black holes are enormous, with gravity spread out over millions of miles. Falling into one wouldn't tear you apart immediately. Instead, you'd drift toward the event horizon, the invisible edge where even light can't escape. Picture it like a slow-motion water slide into the unknown. You'd still be fully aware, still intact, watching physics bending in ways you can't imagine. Why does size matter so much? A black hole with the mass of our sun has an event horizon just under 2 miles wide. Now, remember that supermassive black hole at the center of our Milky Way? It has an event horizon more than 7 million miles wide. That difference matters because the gravitational pull between your head and your toes in a supermassive black hole isn't extreme. You could cross the event horizon without being stretched into a billion pieces. But the terrifying truth is, past the event horizon and you're never coming back. From the outside, you just vanish. From the inside, time and space twist in ways no human experience could predict. You'd keep falling, conscious, intact, into a region of the universe that is completely, utterly unknown. So yes, humans could, in theory, explore a black hole, but it wouldn't be a thrill ride you'd ever tell anyone about. Once you cross the point of no return, your ultimate adventure will begin. What if you're going to be lost in the black hole forever, floating inside its mind-twisting core? 
Are you going to end once the black hole ends? Wait, do black holes even end? Decades ago, Stephen Hawking gave us a clue. Using math and physics, he showed that black holes aren't completely eternal. Over insanely long times, way beyond any human timescale, they slowly shrink. They emit a kind of hot radiation, now called Hawking radiation, and lose mass little by little. Eventually, a black hole becomes tiny. But what happens next? That part is still a total mystery. Scientists have some theories, of course. They're not proven because, obviously, we can't really test them. But they give us a way to guess what might be happening inside a black hole. One of the most developed ideas is called loop quantum gravity. It appeared in the late 1980s, and it tries to explain how space and time behave at the tiniest, craziest scales. According to LQG, something amazing could happen inside a black hole. As the black hole squeezes everything inward, eventually, the weird rules of quantum physics kick in. These rules create a super strong push that can fight back against the collapse. Basically, the black hole could bounce back instead of crushing everything into nothing. After that, space and time start acting normally again. But now, the black hole is growing outward instead of shrinking. The coolest thing is that Einstein's theory says this is possible too. Scientists even have a name for it. A white hole. Think of a white hole as a black hole running in reverse. Kind of like tossing a ball, when it falls, it goes down, but when it bounces back up, it follows the same path in reverse. That's basically what a white hole does with space and time. Inside a black hole, everything gets sucked in. Inside a white hole, everything comes out. Nothing can escape a black hole, and nothing can get into a white hole. When a black hole has evaporated most of its mass, shrinking down to something tiny, loop quantum gravity suggests it can turn into a tiny white hole. Quantum effects make these little white holes surprisingly stable, so they could stick around for a while. Scientists sometimes call them remnants, because they're what's left after a black hole fades away. The jump from black to white hole is a sudden change just like electrons jump between energy levels in an atom. If a spaceship crew watched from afar, a white hole would look almost exactly like a black hole. It has mass, it might spin, and dust and gas might swirl around its edge. But if they kept watching long enough, they'd see the impossible. The white hole would belch with sudden outflow of matter and energy. And then they would know for sure this isn't a black hole anymore. This is a white hole. A black hole has an event horizon, a point of no return. Once you cross it, you're gone. A white hole has the opposite. Its edge is a no-entry zone. Nothing from the outside can ever get in. Inside a white hole, things can come out and mix with the rest of the universe. But since nothing can get in, What's inside is completely cut off from the outside. Nothing that happens out there will ever affect it. But then, how does this filling of the white hole end up there? Could there be a tunnel connecting the black hole that swallows matter and energy with the white hole? And if so, could we leave through the white hole after safely entering the black hole? Sadly, that's very, very unlikely. You can't actually use some kind of bridge or tunnel to move between these holes. If you fall into a black hole, you'll eventually crash into the singularity at its center, even if you survive the initial journey through the event horizon. In any case, so far, these are just speculations, since black holes remain mysterious and unreachable, and we haven't even proven the existence of white holes yet. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.